I thought I, I would make some kind of series or maybe some, some videos about bad designs and uh, repair videos of some products. So here we go. So this video is about this milk frother, froth, milk frother, milk frother. And the problem is it doesn't start. So when you plug it into power, nothing happens. And here I'm checking if the main power supply is, or the, the connector is actually working, or if there's power, or if there's a fuse or something, and there is none. So there is power, which is good. And from there, I disassemble the device. And on the inside, you can see two PCBs and a bunch of wires. And this is actually a Grundig brand, German brand, milk frothing machine so quality stuff <clears throat> and on the inside there are two PCBs one is the power supply that converts um, AC power 230 volts AC to 9 volts DC with 500 milliamps and on the first side you can see that the that there are some parts that are clearly burned and there's some black residue on the PCB and then I check for some voltages while the device is plugged in. There's AC input voltage, obviously, uh, but there is no output voltage. So the power supply is basically fried. So I short the input capacitor so I don't get shocked while desoldering the cables, what I'm doing here. So I disconnect the main supply and the output to the main board, basically. So I can try to connect a bench power supply with 9 volts to test if the main board is still working. And because I don't really need these wires anymore, I just cut them and put some heat shrink tubing on the 230 volt wires because I still need the main connection for the heating element that is connected to the relay on the main board. So um, when the milk frothing machine is plugged in, I don't want to touch 230 volts directly, so I isolate them with this heat shrink. And because I want to be sure that I don't get shocked when I plug it into the bench power supply, I check for continuity between the 9 volt wires and the AC and DC, uh, AC and ground wires from the AC connector. Um, which is not connected, which is good because if it would be connected, I would have the possibility to put 230 volts directly into the bench power supply, fry the power supply and maybe even shock myself. So this is uh, good to be checked before I plug it in because I never know if the um, machine has like some severe issue or, is it, or if it's just really the power supply as I expected. And after I basically replaced the internal power supply with the bench power supply, I tested it and voila it works so um, as i expected it was only the internal power supply and the external power supply the bench power, the bench power supply i connected um, just powers the main board fine and the motor fine and everything actually works so the only thing i have to test now is if the heating element and everything works and to test that i just plug the or put the, the device on the base plate uh, I have to be a bit careful to not shock myself because there are some live wires that I could touch but everything is from plastic so I'm not super concerned about that. And from there I just press the heating and stirring button and the stirring thing stirs and the heating thing heats so everything works as expected. expected. Um, here I'm checking if the, if the metal casing has some power to ground which would always be a bad thing but still could be checked on a metal case especially. And after some seconds, the heating element or the heating sensor detected that the case is hot, so it switches off. And the cold stirring mode works as well and switches off after a few seconds. So I think this device is more or less fixed. I only need a new uh, power supply. And I thought I might have some old charger or power supply or something I could repurpose for this device but I actually didn't have one so that's kind of sad but anyway I can buy this on eBay or Aliexpress I think on Aliexpress it was 91 cents plus 1 euro 40 something shipping which is kind of okay I think for 50 euro milk frothing frothing whatever machine and here again you can see the power supply there the power goes in then gets converted to 9 volts and there it goes out what I also really don't like about this machine is that you have these soft keys and usually you just leave the machine on the space plate so it always gets power 
and the power supply is always powered from the mains so it's always uh, basically converting to 9 volts and everything just runs on standby and when you press one of these two soft keys you start the machine or stop the machine but the problem is that it always consumes power and all the capacitors inside always run so it's not really surprising that this power supply or this machine failed after some time because if the power supply always converts the AC power to DC power, there's like no chance that the capacitor is hold forever. So no wonder that this machine failed after some time. And then just for, for fun, I asked myself how much the PCB would actually cost to manufacture. So I got all these components, checked all the markings and all the component numbers, looked them up on SCSC and found out that the whole system cost or the whole PCB cost for the power supply is only one euro fifty actually including the PCB so it's basically dirt cheap and yeah I mean I got the, the replacement power supply for 91, 91 cents um, but still if they have used like proper capacitors from the beginning that are actually rated for higher temperatures and for longer time on higher temperatures I think the machine would still work also I mean the design is like really bad because you have it basically by design always on and always on the base station so it always consumes power and always degrades the capacitor so basically it's uh, designed to fail after some years so anyway so then i received the power supply and i bought it on aliexpress for this 91 cents or something and it received after two weeks and it is basically just a one-in-one -one replacement for the old power supply it's a bit smaller but that doesn't really matter because it has um, I think 100 milliamps more than the old power supply at least what the Aliexpress listing says you can never be really sure about the listing but anyway um, and yeah so I just opened the milk for that again and solder the new power supply to the old cables of the old power supply I cut before and I have to check for polarity but this is also really simple because the uh, Gondek uh, PCB is labeled so this is kind of nice at least from, from them so I just push in the old cables solder them to the old cables and put it in the milk frother so it doesn't shake around while moving and yeah it's a bit smaller but I can still make it work with the old mount that was already in the milk frother and to test it I put the bag around it because I was a bit concerned that it might cause a short inside the case um, so I just put it on the base plate for testing push some buttons and it actually works so this seems to be fixed and yeah I hope this power supply lasts a few more years than the old power supply but I think the Aliexpress is also not like the highest quality but maybe let's see then I put the power supply back into the case, uh, mounted with the old mountings and put all the screws back in, then the rubber stopper things and test it again and it works. So <laughs> let's see if this milk frother has some life in it left for the next years. And this is how you get a milk frother for 91 cents plus shipping. So thank you very much for watching and I think the next video will be about an ICOM marine radio that I repaired and it was like a similar problem but a bit different. So if you want to check that out stay and want to stay updated you can subscribe and like and hit ring the bell and all, do all the stuff that makes YouTube channels successful or something. So thank you very much. See you. Bye.